Hey there and welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about all things crepe myrtles. If you don't know what a crepe myrtle is, this is what I'm talking about. So I decided to come around my community in search of the most beautiful summer blooming uh, trees and I want to share with you all about the amazing crepe myrtle. You may be asking, what is so special about a crepe myrtle? And so I wanted to dedicate this entire video to sharing what is so amazing about a crepe myrtle. So here in Central North Carolina, they are found everywhere. As a matter of fact, they are one of the staples in almost every landscape in the woods even. I found some yesterday. I wanted to share with you a few facts, a few unique characteristics, a few cons, and different colors that you can find them in. This is a white crepe myrtle, as you can see. The blooms are where the name crepe myrtle comes from. So the crepe resembles crepe paper, like what streamers are made out of. And the blooms attract pollinators, so it makes it a pollinator paradise. Any birds, bees, butterflies are always attracted to crepe myrtles. Crepe myrtles are so fast growing. They are adaptable to almost any soil and they are resilient. So you can pick a crepe myrtle to fit almost any place in your landscape. The one thing that I will say, there are crepe myrtle trees and then there are crepe myrtle shrubs. So they are two totally different plants. Okay, so you don't take a tree like this behind me and cut it off and think you've made a shrub. So a crepe myrtle shrub is designed to stay maybe three feet tall. It's not going to get big like this and it looks more like a ball. We are talking more in this video about the crepe myrtle trees. Okay, so the cool thing about crepe myrtles is not only are they rapid growing, they're adaptable. They can adapt to almost any soil condition. They have amazing interest throughout all four seasons. So right now is the end of summer. We have gorgeous blooms. We have seed pods and nice leaves. Right now, this is the tree in its glory. We have fall interest in that the leaves change and it's beautiful. In the winter is the bark. And you say, what's so interesting about bark? Well, you have to imagine when you have no leaves on the tree, all you're staring at is the shape of the tree and the bark. What is unique about a crepe myrtle is it's exfoliating bark. So that means the bark peels off of the tree and it just does this naturally. It's not a, you know, it's not something that you have to come in and do, but what's underneath of this exfoliating bark is this gorgeous look and it's called mottled bark. So the trunk has color variations like this. And this is what is so pretty in the wintertime. When everything else is drab and dreary, you have your crepe myrtles that still have this gorgeous cinnamon variation. And each crepe myrtle has a different look to it, which is why I always say you really want to leave the structure of the crepe myrtle. Don't chop it off. Don't crepe murder it. One of the characteristics of a crepe myrtle is its multiple trunks. It's very common to see, you know, three, four, five, up to 10 trunks in a crepe myrtle. That is a gorgeous look and it's a vase-shaped tree, as you can see, you know, kind of makes a V and you rarely see a single trunk coming up and then it branching. The cool thing about crepe myrtles is so many different colors. And so today I can't wait to show you all the different colors that I've actually found in my community. These are the most vibrant crepe myrtles I have ever seen. This purple color is absolutely magnificent. I am in the middle of the road on a busy road, um, but I wanted to stop. I had to turn around and show you these because they are so beautiful. All right, I'm at a church and I just happened to see these because they are so beautiful. They are that purple color that you see. I mean, look at the color of the blooms. They're almost like electric looking. Um, so this is a standard size crepe myrtle 
This is what you would say um, is a full grown crepe myrtle that has not been pruned. So you can look in here and see how gorgeous the branch is, the trunks are, it's multi-trunked. And look at, the, look at the way that the tree, just sort of the shape of it. It's a vase shaped tree. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous purple. It will literally bloom and bloom and bloom until it gets cold. All right, so here is a little pocket park in my little downtown. And they have the streets lined with crepe myrtles. And these are, these are sort of the bubblegum colored crepe myrtles. You can see they are full of blooms on the top. Uh, they're very, very tall. These are mature trees. You can tell by the size of the trunks. So do you see how thick the trunks are? Here you can also see the exfoliating bark. So do you see what I'm talking about here? And you can just peel that off if you want or the tree naturally does it like that. So see, and then typically the tree will try and branch out. Let me show you where it is cut. It puts out what we call suckers. These are suckers. So you can see this limb likely fell and had to be cut. Well, it put out suckers. These are the buds that are waiting to, <laughs> just for the opportunity to sprout, I guess, for lack of a better term. All you have to do, pop them off, just like that. Simple. And it just takes the tree back to looking nice and neat and tidy. So that's one of my favorite things to do is to pop off suckers. A lot of times you'll see them growing around the base where maybe you've cut it back or, you know, sometimes they just sprout. That is absolutely, um, so do you see how neat and tidy the crepe myrtle is? You want to keep the bottom free of the little sprouts coming out. So just pop those off, pop those suckers off. Okay. You want to limb up a crepe myrtle for the tree formed look. Now, some people like the branches to go all the way to the ground. I'll show you some examples of that. But this is a mature crepe myrtle. This is a bubblegum pink. And you can see the flower clusters and how gorgeous it is. You can get super unique with your crepe myrtle. And what I mean by that is there is actually a variety of crepe myrtles that have a purplish black leaf and they're very unique they're they're not something that i see very often but they're really cool looking i found one and so i wanted to drive over i'm gonna i'm gonna go there now and show you this specific type of crepe myrtle it's actually blooming right now so you can kind of see the contrast between the darker black purple ish maroon deep maroon leaves and the flowers so here is the different colored leaf. And it's got a little flower right in there. So you can kind of see a little bit more up top. So you see the uniqueness of this. And then right behind it, right here, is a white, so a Natchez crepe myrtle that's, you know, in its standard form. Then you have the deep purple green. So isn't that really, really pretty? Right here is another color that I think is so pretty. It's almost like a baby pink. So it's a lighter shade than what we just looked at. Before it was a bubblegum pink. This is almost a pale baby pink. So pretty. So here's a little bit better look at the color. You can see they've lined this street here with them and they haven't really pruned the suckers off. So you can kind of see it, it looks a little messy. Um, you can plant underneath them as long as you pop those suckers off. Here's an example of a semi-dwarf cray myrtle and it's lilac. You guys see how gorgeous this is? So it's got tons of trunks. They've left it more of a shrub not elevated it much you can see the trunks on the bottom but look at that color isn't that gorgeous it almost looks like pink but it's actually purple so 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 pretty uh this is their mature height 
So you can see it's about, I would say probably 10, 15 feet tall. It's a smaller tree as compared to, there's a maple. Um, and the leaves are sort of a deeper green. And as you can see around the base, that's what I was telling you, these are suckers that you see sometimes around the base. It's amazing what just popping those off does. You can take your hand and literally just pop it off. And then you can also see the bark. You can peel that off and have a really pretty bark. You don't have to, and it doesn't hurt the tree, but the best here, I absolutely love these deep red. It's almost a geranium red um, against those green, that really pretty green. So I'm so excited to be able to show you red. I just happened to see these as I was driving by. So, all right, we're gonna keep on going. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to harp on the crepe myrtle, uh, where you're chopping the crepe myrtle off straight across, giving it a flat top. But I wanna show you the difference between a crepe myrtle that has not been butchered improperly and a crepe myrtle that has been pruned properly, or one that has been crepe murdered and one that has not, okay? So I sat in this exact spot and watched a guy take a chainsaw and cut it straight across. Um, I started to go over and say something, but you know, I just decided to stay in my lane and mind my business. Um, you just never know these days and you know, but I want you to look at the difference between this crepe myrtle and its growth habit. See how squatty it looks? Looks like a little tiny trunk with a bunch of branches, right? All right, now I want you to look at the shape of this one. Do you see how the canopy doesn't, on the other one, it starts way down here. Sorry, it's focusing on my finger, but it starts way down, <laughs> way down, where you don't see the natural progression of the tree. So that's the main difference. When you crepe murder a tree, what it does is it sends out tiny little shoots. And so rather than having nice, thick, healthy, strong branches, there's a bunch of tiny little branches that are not very strong and that start lower. I just want you to see the difference in a natural shaped crepe myrtle that has not been butchered unnecessarily and the other one. Okay, so enough about that. Let's go look at the pretty crepe myrtle colors. That's a really pretty color. It's like a baby pink purple. Really, really pretty. Here we have some dwarf crepe myrtles. They look more like a shrub. Um, they're just a dwarf variety, and they'll get just a little bit taller than that. As you can see, they are a bubblegum pink, kind of Pepto-Bismol. So the one that I want for my house is the purple one. And there is one I'm walking past right now. Let me show you. It's so pretty. The color is just gorgeous. Almost a grape color like a grape crayon purple it's like a purpley pink but it is so pretty like the color is so pretty so I am at my community center and I'm standing in front of a super mature crepe myrtle and really wanted to share with you the drawbacks of crepe myrtles and to me they still do not deter me from wanting all the things crepe myrtles. So let's start with sooty mold and aphids. So crepe myrtles get aphids. They are a sucking insect. They suck the juices out of the leaf. Their secretions we call honeydew, okay? That attracts sooty mold. So it's a black looking mold that covers crepe myrtles. So here's what black sooty mold looks like on a leaf. This is a viburnum leaf. And you can see it comes off. You can see where I rubbed, rubbed it. This is exactly what gets on the crepe myrtle leaves from the aphid secretion of honeydew. The second thing that a crepe myrtle gets is powdery mildew. And voila, I have found powdery mildew on this crepe myrtle. So 
So it won't kill it, but it just is kind of unsightly. The next drawback is suckers. Okay, so these are the long whips that come out of, sometimes you see them coming out of the tree. Sometimes you see them coming out of the base. Sometimes you see them coming out of both. It's usually where the tree has been pruned. So these are suckers and they are so easy to just take and pop off. The other drawback to a crepe myrtle is they are messy. They are messy in that they drop their flowers continuously all throughout the season and their little seed heads. Fall, they're going to drop their leaves. This is a deciduous tree. Is the color not gorgeous? It's like a hot, hot pink, almost a fruit punch color. I love it. Only place that I would not put a crepe myrtle is around a pool deck or a water feature because they will clog a drain. So it's actually a different day. I'm editing this video to get it out to you. And I realized I left off a couple pieces of information that I really, really wanted to share with you. Part of the drawbacks that I wanted to add to crepe myrtles are Japanese beetles. Japanese beetles absolutely love them. They love their leaves uh, to munch on them. Won't kill the tree. It is kind of unsightly. You can spray with liquid seven. The second is that the other place I would not put a crepe myrtle is up against your foundation. I know there are so many, maybe even some of you that have crepe myrtle trees against your foundation. I would not recommend this. So I see it all the time and you have a great big huge tree that is up against a foundation and you got to think about the tree roots. They do tend to stay on the ground sometimes and that could be a problem for the foundation and also they get really really big and so you know hitting the side of your house and that sort of thing. So only time I would ever have a crimp myrtle up against my foundation in my foundation bed would be a dwarf crepe myrtle that doesn't get maybe three to four feet tall, not even sure what kind that is, what variety, or if there is even one, or a crepe myrtle shrub. And I'm sorry for any of you that have those, I would recommend getting them out. That's where a lot of the times the crepe myrtle occurs, where they're chopped off trying to keep them or bring them down. And that is what I call the wrong plant in the wrong location or wrong tree in the wrong location. Okay, so wanted to add those. Also, one of the perks to a crepe myrtle that I forgot to mention is they are deer resistant. Deer do not like them and there's a lot that are pest and disease resistant as well. So be on the lookout for those in the uh, plant tags, but know that they are deer resistant as of today and that could change. Deer change their appetite all the time. So I wanted to show you a website that I found. I was only able to show you so many crepe myrtles in my community that I could find, but there are so many more. And so I wanted to show you a way that you can search different colors, different sizes, different, different interests and details about crepe myrtles. And I found this amazing website. So this is the Wilson Brothers Gardens and they are in McDonough, Georgia. They have maybe the best plant catalog I've ever found, and I wanted to share that with you. So they have all these different categories across the top. For the purposes of this video, I wanted to show you the amazing catalog information that they have on crepe myrtles. So I just put that in the, in the top search bar. So they have every kind of crepe myrtle you can think of. They have several different colors they have single trunk multi trunk they have with you know the different colored leaves so black leaves lush green leaves every kind of leaf and then they actually sell these so i was thinking you know if you wanted to learn more about the crepe myrtles and you know more specifically what works in your zone they do have ways that you can filter it down through the zone which is right over here so let's just look at one so I can show you what it is about this website that really drew me in and made me want to share it. The uh, website is Wilson Bros, B -R -O -S, Gardens com. I'm going to click on this Twilight Purple here because that's really the one that I want. And what I wanted to show you about this is on here it's got pictures. You can kind of zoom in and look at it. There's a brief description on the bottom, which I love. And then there's all the different pictures and, you know, you can go through and look at the, the color up close. I mean, that is gorgeous to me. I love the best about this website 
is it gives you so many details. So USDA plant hardiness zone, minus 7B, so I'm good there. You can find your zone, I'm sure, by putting in your zip code. It has the height and width at maturity. That means when the plant is fully grown. So 15 to 25 feet, that is a massive tree. So it's going to get tall. And then it gives you all the different characteristics of this tree. So the flower color, the bloom, all summer long, 120 days. The best part, and this is what really made me want to show you this, is the bark color. Gray, pink, reddish brown. The fall color is yellow, burgundy, orange. Then it gives you a description and how you would want to use it in the landscape. So, I hope this helps you. Check out their website. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I am going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I really hope that you found something beneficial and exciting about crepe myrtles. They are such an amazing addition to any landscape um, as long as they are in your right zone. Some things that I wanted to point out that I think I forgot in the video. If I didn't, it's been a long day, um, so just disregard. But keep in mind that crepe myrtles are not only fast growing, adaptable to most any uh, soil condition and climate, as long as it is in with the correct zone. They are also drought tolerant. So for all of you that, you know, that want to really focus on drought tolerant landscapes, crepe myrtles are a perfect addition once they are acclimated. Not once they're planted. You have to water them in and get them adapted to where they are planted. I also want to mention that, you know, there is a lot of information online, but the most important the most important and most beneficial information that I would encourage you as you're out shopping for a crepe myrtle is to read the plant tag, make sure you have the right plant tag, and that you do your research and you see the mature height of your crepe myrtle. Remember, there are many different sizes. There's dwarf, semi-dwarf, and then, you know, big. So, you could have some tree that you've just purchased for your home that you don't want to get above eight feet and you accidentally pick up one that is going to get 25 feet. They are a rapid growing tree. So they're not slow growing. So you will see that mature height sooner than a lot of other trees. So I just want to encourage you to do your research, make sure that you have the right tree, look at all of your options. They are plentiful. The internet is an amazing resource. I'm happy to be a resource for you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in another video soon. Take care.